What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today I'm gonna to be showing you the first 23 things that you should do after unboxing and setting up your brand new M3 MacBook Air. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is something very simple, you want to update the software. There's gonna be a day one update. If you go into your settings, general, and then to software updates, you will see there's gonna be an update waiting for you, macOS Sonoma 14.4. I would recommend going ahead and updating to that as soon as possible. Now the very first thing I do every single time I get a new MacBook is I head down into the settings and go to trackpad and from here I change multiple things in this section so the point and click under that section tracking speed I always have this three before the fastest that's gonna be completely personal preference right there and then I go down here to tap to click I like being able to tap instead of actually clicking down on the trackpad so if you like doing that that is a good option to select right there as well and then over to scroll and zoom I personally Personally, do not like natural scrolling. I like to go up when my hand goes up and down when my hand goes down. So I, I like to turn natural scrolling off. That way everything moves with the way that my fingers are moving. And then the other thing I like to change relating to the trackpad is actually gonna be under accessibility. So if we go to accessibility and then go over here and then go to pointer control, from here I like to go to trackpad options and then I'm gonna enable use trackpad for dragging and we're gonna change the dragging style to a three finger drag and click on okay. That means that we can now use three fingers to drag and move windows. So if I just put my finger right here normally you'd have to click down and hold to move this window around but now you can just put three fingers there and you can move windows around very quickly and easily and if you're using an external mouse or an external trackpad you might want to enable ignore built-in trackpad when you have a mouse or wireless trackpad connected that way you don't accidentally press and, and move things when you have an external source connected okay so now we're going to change our display setting so I have a 15 inch MacBook Air here but if you are rocking a 13 inch you definitely want to pay attention to this next one so you want to go to your settings and go to displays and you might want to enable more space this is going to give you more space on your desktop to work with so it's going to change the resolution you can see 1920 by 1243 versus the default at least for the 15 inch is 1710 by 1107 so you might want to change that to more space if you are using a 13 inch display but on the 15 inch i think default is just fine and also if you want to change how this appears a lot of people get confused by that you can just go down to advanced right here and just go to show resolutions as list turn that on and now it's going to show all your different resolutions right here in a list view which is kind of easier for some people if you already know resolutions you know and you don't need a visual for it and then below that we have automatically adjust brightness I like to turn this off I do not like auto brightness on my MacBook like I do on my iPhone and then also under true tone if you're doing any type of photography or video work you definitely want to have true tone turned off so you can see the true colors however if you're using it just for web browsing and basic things you're not doing any type of professional color grading I would recommend and keeping that turned on and then if you click on advanced this is where we have all of our settings where you can use universal control so you can see up here in the status bar I actually have universal control turned on right now because I have my Mac studio up here so if I wanted to control my Mac studio from my MacBook or vice versa I can do that when I have these settings enabled however some people might not like that so you can go ahead and disable that and you'll notice when I disable it it removes it from my status bar up there now below displays we do have wallpaper and with macOS Sonoma, you do have a lot of landscape wallpapers that you can download. Now, there's only going to be one that's downloaded by default, which is the one that it comes with, Sonoma Horizon. However, you can download any of these, and you will see up here we do have a progress bar that's going to show how long until that wallpaper is downloaded. Now, keep in mind, these do take up quite a bit of space, so you might want to be wary of you know downloading every single one of them. And then speaking of the wallpaper, if you go to the lock screen settings down here, we do have a couple of things to change here as well. So so first off if you do set your wallpaper as an animated wallpaper you will be able to see it moving on the lock screen but if you do want to disable that you can choose show as screensaver you can just turn that off and then it will not kind of animate on the lock screen so anyways if you go into lock screen right here we do also have some other settings I want to talk about so these ones right here I actually had to change these even before I made this video because they were driving me crazy but basically it's turn display off on battery when inactive by default I think this is set to like two minutes you definitely want to set that to higher like at least 10 minutes you know if you are working from home I understand that you may not want to turn off your display you know when you are working in an office and other people are around for security purposes I understand that 
formats. But if you're working from home, there's really no reason to have this on anything less than 10 minutes. Otherwise, it's just gonna annoy the crap out of you. So I would recommend turning this at least to 10 minutes. I have mine set to 30 minutes, and you can see I have all of mine set right here to pretty high numbers because I don't like my screen going inactive when I just go to grab you know, a drink or a bite to eat. So the wallpaper that we downloaded earlier has now applied to our desktop. However, these icons over on the right-hand side of our desktop are really taking away from how good this looks. So we wanna change that. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the desktop and dock section in settings and then go down to desktop and stage manager. And you want to go to show items and deselect on desktop. And now you're gonna see it's going to make all of those icons, everything on your desktop disappear. It looks way better. And you could also choose to show items only in stage manager. And then if you want to see those icons again, you can just simply click on the desktop and it will pull up all of those icons that you have on the desktop. However, if you don't like that, if you do not like clicking the wallpaper to reveal the desktop, you can turn that off by going to only in stage manager instead of always. Now, when I click, you can see nothing happens. Now, I will say that if you do like having widgets on the desktop, you might wanna go back up here and turn show items back to on for desktop. That way you can right click and add your widgets right here. So just go to edit widgets. And then from here, you're gonna be able to add any of these widgets you can drag and put them on your desktop so that would be the only reason I'd say that you want to have show items on desktop turned on however you can turn it off afterwards and you'll still be able to see your widgets now something else I want to mention with the m3 MacBook Air is that we now have support for two external displays with the MacBook lid closed so before the m3 you could only use one external display so if you're like me with a dual display setup make sure you know that you can now use this MacBook Air with a dual display setup as long as the lid is closed and it's in clamshell mode now also with the m3 macbook air we have the same three mic array that we saw with the m2 model however we now have voice isolation and wide spectrum modes so if you go ahead into here where you have your microphone and you go to the standard you can see it shows right there you'll notice that we now have voice isolation you can change from standard to voice isolation and also if you are in a you know in the correct environment you can also do wide spectrum and by the way that shows up in the menu anytime that you are recording video or audio so like if I were to go to QuickTime for example and I go to create a new audio recording you'll notice that it here's my audio right here so I can go up to the menu bar and you can see it shows QuickTime player and that's where I can change my mic mode so anytime something is using your microphone you will see a little icon up in the status bar and when you click on that that's where you can change the mic mode now speaking of that status bar I've been wondering what my battery percentage is at and I do not like having to click on the battery icon to see my battery percentage so let's go ahead and change that so we need to go back into our settings and we're gonna go down here to the control center and from here you can see we have a lot of different sections here to change different things in the menu bar which we'll go to in a minute but first off we want to go to other modules and then to battery and you'll see the show percentage toggle you want to turn that on and now you'll notice up in the status bar we do show our 84% right there and then as you can see up here our status bar is getting quite cluttered so we need to clean that up a bit if we go back up to the top right here we can clean that up from this section now you can also do this from the status bar itself but I like doing it here in this section so if you don't want your Wi-Fi showing up there you can turn that off by just simply clicking here and don't show in menu bar down here in the menu bar only section I like to go into my clock options and change this so I like showing the not the date of the week I just like showing the date and the time I don't the day of the week and then also the style you can change between digital and analog i like having mine at digital however i do not like having pm or am there i always know what time it is so i do not need that and then you also have a different options in here but i like this clean look where it just shows the date and the time no am pm and no day of the week and then right below that we have spotlight which i will show you in a moment why you want to turn this off okay so now that we clean the top of our desktop let's clean the bottom of it with the dock the dock by default comes with a lot of applications that you're probably just simply never going to use so we need to remove almost all of these so to remove these you're just going to take and drag and hold it to the desktop right here and it will say remove that's a quick and easy way to remove all of these from your desktop so I only like having maybe like less than 10 applications total in my docs so we're gonna remove all these and then also I'm weird I don't like having any of my recents showing right here so we're gonna right click on the doc and then go to doc settings and this is gonna open up our settings right here under the doc section so this is the same desktop and doc section we were in previously however we're gonna be on the doc section up at the very top and this is where you can change 
change the size. So if I move the size, I can make it real big or I can make it real small and I can also add magnification. So if you do like having magnification on there, you can have that set to, you know, so where it looks like this has this really cool effect. I like that. It's like the classic Mac look right there. If you do like having your dock on the side, like the left or the right, you can do that. So if you like having it on the left or the right, I personally like having mine on the bottom. And then also you could have the genie effect when you minimize windows. So for example, if I go into Safari and I minimize it, that is the default genie effect. Anyways, we also have automatically hide and show the dock. So if you don't like your dock always showing up, you can turn that on. That way your dock is not going to appear unless you hover down there with your cursor that will pull the dock up, which I think gives a clean look. So I like having that turned on. That way my desktop just looks really clean until I actually need the dock. And then I do also like having show suggested and recent apps and dock turned off. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable this for now, just so you can see what happens when I turn off the recent docs section. But you'll notice that we still have some windows to the right of everything that we have in the dock. Now you can remove these. So if you right click on the downloads, you can go here and just go to option and then remove from dock if you wanna remove your downloads from the dock. And then for the windows, you can change this as well. So they don't show up in this right hand section. And to do that, you want to enable this setting right here, minimize windows into application icon when when you select that you will notice that now when we go to minimize this it will just go into the Safari icon that way the right side of our dock is super clean now earlier I disabled show items on desktop but we're gonna turn that on in case you are somebody who does like seeing all the items on your desktop because there's a much easier way to organize this than what you get out of the box so to do this we're gonna right click right here and we're just going to simply select use stacks and you'll notice that right away everything looks much more organized because now everything is organized into stacks which is just basically uh, combining all of the like files into one folder essentially so all screenshots go to screenshots all movies go to movies and so on so, and you could also click on that to expand the view and see all the screenshots in there and then same with movies now also if we go into show view options this is where you can change how big the icon size is so if you want it to be really small you can make it really small or you can make it really large right there you can change the grid spacing so you can do that you can change the text size the label position all of that okay so enough about the visuals let's get into some more practical things so let's start with the touch ID and password so if you already set up touch ID in the initial setup process that's fine but you may want to set up touch ID for more than one finger so to do that you could just simply add a fingerprint so if I go to add fingerprint right here you will have to put in the password for your computer and then maybe you used your index finger in the setup but maybe you want to use your middle finger or maybe you want to use your other hand you know to unlock your Mac as well or if you share your Mac with another person you can have them put in their fingerprint so they can do things on your computer as well so we're just gonna do my middle finger since that is a different finger than what I set up the MacBook with and there we go we have that finger added and all of these settings are on by default now something that's off by default is unlocking your Mac with an Apple watch so if you have an Apple watch I would highly recommend going into the touch ID and password settings and enabling unlock with Apple watch it's gonna make unlocking your Mac a breeze every time you open up your Mac it's pretty much going to unlock instantly when you're wearing your Apple watch it is super convenient now also one thing that you don't really have to change but just something you want to know about the M3 MacBook Air is that it now has hardware accelerated ray tracing so you might want to try out gaming and especially all the games in Apple Arcade everything is just gonna run smoother on the MacBook Air even compared to the M2 MacBook Air again thanks to the M3 chip and that hardware accelerated ray tracing and then speaking of applications you might also want to download some web applications like for example notion is something that I personally use all the time or something like Twitter or X we could add that as a web application now to do that when you're on the web page just go up into your preferences up in the top and then go to file and go to add to doc and from here you're going to be able to change the name so we'll change this to notion you can change the URL and also the icon Icon if you click on that if you've downloaded another you know icon that you want to use and then click add and now it will add that to our dock you can do that the same with like X and this example okay so now let's talk about some applications that enhance your experience here on the Mac so these are applications that I download pretty much right away every time I set up a new Mac and the first one is paste pal so this one is a clipboard manager tool that is just so awesome and so 
many ways. So you have it up in the status bar at all times. So anytime you copy something, it will show in this history right here. So we're going to test that. We're going to go into our Safari and we'll just go to apple.com and we're just going to select apple.com and you can see that when i copy that it now shows up in here you also have some additional options where you can click you can copy it as plain text you can add a detail to it so you can search and find it later you just have a lot of options and it's really nice to be able to go back and see everything that you copied previously and then the other application is right next to that up in the status bar and this one is called hand mirror and this one is very simple it's just going to show you like you're holding up a mirror in front of you it's going to show you what you look like so you can see you know and make sure that your background and your face and everything looks fine before a video call it's a free very simple app that just always lives up in the status bar that just shows you what you look like before a call and then the other one is clean shot x so this is a great application for capturing screenshots and editing the screenshots you know you can also screen record with the software it's just super advanced and it's just a great tool to have for the Mac, especially if you like sharing screenshots online, you can just make them all look much prettier than just a basic screenshot does. I have a lot of other apps I like to download as well, but we'll talk about those in a future video. So anyways, let's talk about a quick way to screen record or screenshot, and that is holding command shift and then pressing on three for a full screen screenshots or command shift four to select where you want to screenshot. So those are gonna be the default keyboard shortcuts. Now you could also press command shift five to start a video a screen recording so if you want to start a screen recording for video not just a screenshot you can do it with the five key okay so earlier we talked about spotlight search but i didn't really go into detail here and spotlight search is something that i use probably more than anything else on the Mac aside from Finder, which I'll talk about Finder in a moment as well. There's a lot of settings in there to change. But anyway, Spotlight Search, if you press Command Spacebar, that will pull up Spotlight Search. Now you could also do that by pressing on F4 up here. However, that is too far up on the keyboard. So I just, you know, naturally just go to Command Spacebar. It's easier to press. It's closer to where your fingers are always at. So when you press Command Spacebar, it's gonna pull up the Spotlight Search and you can do pretty much everything from here so if you want to open up an application this is a quick way to open up the application you don't even need to type it out all the way once it auto corrects you can just press on return and it will open up that application very simply now also you could do it for what I use it all the time for is math so like if I want to know this times this it's going to show me the result right there and I could just press command C or copy that right there the result right there and next time I go into spotlight search it is still there until I hit delete and you can also search in your photos you can search for files you can see all these different photos from different applications websites show up different you know folders or PDF documents that I have on my desktop all of those show up in here as long as I type out the name of that file however you'll notice after using spotlight search that you might not like all the results that you're getting maybe you want to narrow it down to certain things and that's where you definitely want to go into your settings and change that so if you go into settings and go to Siri and spotlight under here under spotlight you can see that everything is selected by default but you might not want that i definitely do not want that so for example i don't like looking up the definition of something in spotlight search so there we go i deselected everything i do not want showing up in my search results just so it's not cluttered and i can kind of just see exactly what i want to see every time i search for something okay so now we need to talk about finder because this is the application you're going to use the most on your mac over time so by default this just looks like a mess it's disorganized it's just too much going on so we need to change this now the first thing i like to do is just change everything just me personally to the list style i like seeing everything in a list style right here you do have multiple options so you have the grid which is default and then you also have the option for this one right here and then also this one right here so all those are different options i used the list view now it opens up to recents by default which i personally do not like so we're gonna go up to finder right here and then go to settings and we're gonna change new finder windows show and change this to what you use the most like for me for example i use the documents folder the most but if you use something else you could do that you could also go to other and choose a specific file there as well or a specific folder so i'm going to choose documents that way every time i open up finder it's going to open up my documents folder and then also in these settings we have tags so you can 
can enable or disable the tags right there and then we have sidebar so this is where you're going to want to change this this widget right here is bothering me. let me remove that real quick so we just right clicked and removed that widget anyways right here for sidebar this is where you can disable all these things that you see on the side of your finder which is just way too much by default so me for example the first thing i disable is tags i don't use tags so i'm gonna go ahead and disable those and then right here under locations we have network showing up which i don't ever use so we're going to disable pretty much everything we don't normally use here so cloud storage bonjour computers connected servers we're going to disable that and we'll also disconnect or we'll deselect cds dvds and ios devices actually you might use ios devices so we'll leave that enabled so i just like having these three saved right here and then also we have icloud so if you use icloud drive you can have that set here me personally i don't really use icloud drive for anything on my mac so i'm going to deselect that that way we have a very clean look right here with just our favorites but even those i don't like so first off airdrop we're going to disable that and i'll show you why in a moment also recents we're going to disable that i don't ever use recents and then one last thing i want to change in the finder settings is under advanced and that is when performing a search i like performing the search in a specific folder so like if i go into a folder for example we'll just go to the desktop right here and i go to search i only want to be searching the desktop when i search for something here so like if i search for 2024 for example it's only going to show me 2024 from the desktop by default now you can change change this after you search it to search the whole Mac but by default it's going to go to desktop as the default you know what you're searching for okay so this top part is also looking really messy and disorganized so we're going to right click anywhere in this blank space on the finder window and go to customize toolbar and from here you can remove anything that is showing up right here by just simply taking and dragging and pushing that off into the abyss onto the desktop to remove that so you could also add things up there so the first thing I want to add which by the way these little blank squares is where you can add different things into you can really add it anywhere but those blank spaces are going to be separators which we could add as well you could see it's space right here but airdrop we definitely want to add up here to the menu bar the status bar right here because we remove that from the sidebar so that's the main one I use all the time and you can also add a space or remove a space so I like having the search right next to that and I don't really think I need the space it's just taking up too much space pun intended so we're going to remove that space right there and then tags I do not use tags we're going to drag that off and then these three dots right here I'll just go out of here so you can see what these three dots are this is going to be like a quick menu little option here where you can sort by new folder open a new tab you could do all these from here so I like having that there just because it is kind of a multi-function menu and now when you actually have your files right here you have the name date modified size and kind and you can move these over so if you want something to be bigger or wider you know than something else you can do that like date modified does not need to be need to be as wide as it is I actually like having it just show the like abbreviation for the month and then I don't need to know the kind so we're just going to go ahead and right click on that and we're going to deselect kind you could also right click and add something here if you wanted to so if you want to see like the dates created and not just the date modified you could do that as well and anytime you click on these it sorts it by ascending or descending you could also move these as well so like if I wanted the date created to be before date modified we could just move that over just like so now we're going to to put the list view back in here because if you're somebody who likes having the icons so we're going to show this as icons you'll notice that sometimes these can be moved around and just be out of place in here so if you want to you know avoid that just simply right click and then go to sort by and go to snap to grid and that's going to put everything in a grid so everything looks nice and neat and it's not out of place or you know uneven on one side now something else you need to know in mac os is how to preview documents or files so if you go to a file like the screenshot and just press on the space bar that's going to allow you to see a preview of that file you can also press and hold and then when you let go it will not show that preview anymore so you can do that for videos for photos for any file that you want you could also right click and go to get info if you want to quickly see the file size and also all this other information as well now something else I like to change every time I get a new Mac is inside of Safari so if you go into Safari and then go to Safari settings you might want to turn off open safe files after downloading this way anytime you download like an mp3 or a video or anything like that it doesn't automatically play so I would recommend turning that off now the next thing I always 
always do after getting a new MacBook is I turn off iMessage and FaceTime. Now I might be the minority, but I do not like getting FaceTime calls or text messages on my computer. It's distracting and I just don't like it. So let's go up to messages and we're going to go up to settings. And from here under iMessage, you want to disable being reached by at the minimum your phone number. Maybe you have an email address that you contact other people on like business related. You can't keep that selected. That's what I do personally. That way I don't get any personal messages on my MacBook. And then same goes for FaceTime. I like disabling all of my FaceTime contacts and I also disable calls from iPhone. That way I don't get any FaceTime calls on my MacBook. Now I do also want to mention iCloud because if you notice we did turn off iCloud earlier. So if we go ahead and re-enable iCloud Drive here, this is something I would recommend turning off on your MacBook just because it's going to take up space. So if you go into your system settings here and then go into iCloud, you will notice that this is turned on by default. So it shows apps using iCloud and for example, iCloud Drive, I would recommend turning that off. So you can do, you know, sync this Mac is fine to keep that on, but I would recommend not having desktop and documents folders enabled. That way you're not eating up some of your space, especially if you only have a 256 gigabyte model. And if you're somebody who has iCloud Plus, if you pay for iCloud storage, you have iCloud Plus. Private Relay is something that's going to be on by default. However, this can sometimes cause issues with your network speed. It can make things slower. It can make your Wi-Fi slower. So you might want to turn that off if you're having issues with your Wi-Fi speeds. And then the final thing I want to mention is Time Machine. So you can go into your settings, general, and then to Time Machine. And this is going to be the backup for Mac OS. You can back up all your files to an old hard drive by just simply clicking on Add Backup Disk. That's going to be a good way to be able to recover cover lost files in the future if you were to accidentally delete them. I'd recommend just getting like a four terabyte hard drive off of Amazon. You don't need an SSD or anything fancy. Just use that and back up periodically. So there you have it. Those are the first 23 things that you need to do after getting your brand new M3 MacBook Air. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more Mac OS and Mac related videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.